Well, back to the TF-166. Um, got those solder joints soldered up, and looks like I got it working pretty consistently now, at least on the gain portion of it. Um, so I'm going to go through the calibration instructions here. It tells you to remove the TF-166 from its case, which is done. And then you're supposed to lay it on its right side and adjust a static meter zero to zero on the left edge. So you lay it on its right side and you adjust to zero. Until basically it is zeroed on the left edge right there. See that in the camera or not? But that's a zero adjust right here. You see, you can kind of move that around, adjust it to where it's zeroed. Then from that point, all the pots are down underneath here, so I don't know how you can adjust it sitting this way. So I'm going to stand it back up again and lean it up against my Senecor SC61. One thing you want to be careful of behind this aluminum plate. There's a ballast resistor and two zener diodes, and basically there's 110 volts AC being fed to those zener diodes. So you don't want to lean up against anything metal. This is all plastic on the front of this, so I'm not too concerned about it. The only reason really I'm leaning up against this is so I can do this a little bit more easily on camera. But anyways, um, let's see, I'm supposed to turn the gain control fully counterclockwise and connect a milliamp meter which I have already um, positive lead to the collector and the negative lead to the emitter so that's what we've got then you press the gain, oh by the way your um, settings on this is RFIF negative polarity, DC circuit out. Okay, and you're supposed to press the gain button and adjust the front panel gain calibration until you have 0.5 milliamps on the multimeter. So, press the gain button. Run it up to where I have 0.5 milliamps. Okay, and you should um, have an internal, the beta reading should be at 50, and it's not, but I was, remember I was messing around with this, trying to adjust it when all the solder joints were cracked, so of course the gain control is now off. Okay, so I'm turning the pot on the side here. To bring that to 50. Okay, that's pretty close. And then now you turn the front panel gain control until you have 5 milliamps. doggone close. It's going to probably bounce around between yeah, 4.97 and 5.05. There we go. And there's another pot right beside it. It is R106 and you adjust that for a beta of 500. Okay, now you go back to 0.5 milliamps because both these settings kind of interact with each other. So as you adjust one, 
then the other one isn't quite as accurate. See that now we're a little bit higher on the 50. So now you fine tune that one back to 50. Really touchy. I'd kind of like to have a 10 turn pot instead of a single turn. But that's pretty doggone close. And back to point or back to five milliamps. <clears throat> These pots are really touchy. Which especially once you get midway on them. tired. <laughs> okay, back to point five. I'll just take it to fifty to see what we get. Basically, you can probably adjust this back and forth forever. 1973, when they were doing this, they probably had nothing more than an analog meter movement, and they're not, weren't probably getting anywhere near as close as what I am, anyways. But I try to work with as close a precision as I possibly can. But that's pretty much right on on both of them now. So that's how you adjust the gain on that. Now, uh, Shut the camera off and I'll set up for the um, transconductance measurement for the field effect side of it and demonstrate that I've got a problem there. So I'll be back here in a minute. Okay, I've got it set up for the uh, transconductance measurement on here. Um, I decided to set the thing on its side because I can't have it leaning up against the Sencor waveform analyzer um, and try and read the display and try to show it on the camera at the same time. Kind of a strange thing as I was experimenting with this. I tried this earlier today and I absolutely could not get any signal out on it. Um, and now it seems like I could after I hit the gain button several times. So I don't know, there might be more crack solder joints or something going on there. I'm not sure. But let's give it a try here and see if we can get a useful measurement. And I'll have to do a little bit more searching around. But um, what you're supposed to do is you have gate one button in, um, normal mode rather than enhancement mode, field effect, um, negative polarity, and then AC in circuit. And then you connect the oscilloscope ground lead to the source lead. And then back behind here I have the scope lead hooked up to gate one. So now you're supposed to press the gain button and adjust the internal GM transconductance towel control for exactly 0.48 volts peak to peak. Now let's see what we have here. You should have like a kind of ugly looking square wave. They actually show a picture of it in this manual. So let's see if that's what I get. Yep. Now I get that. Now previously, when I hit the gain button, I got absolutely nothing. And then I started messing with the leakage button. You can see every time you hit the leakage button, you get something slightly different. And then after that, I started getting my gain measurement. So there's something goofy with the leakage. See, there's probably about what you should be getting out of that. I'm not totally certain. I can imagine you get this crap coming out of it now. But 
Anyways, now the gain button is working as it should. And as you can see, um, it tells you to adjust the waveform to exactly 0.48 volts peak to peak. Now, if you look at my display here, one of the reasons I got this waveform analyzer is you don't have to count the graticals on it. It's much easier. You can just read the value right up there, and we've got 0.48 volts peak to peak. So that section was pretty much perfectly calibrated. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if maybe the bipolar transistor gain may have also been beta measured, might also have been perfectly calibrated in the past. And then, of course, I changed it, trying to get it to come in whenever the solder joints were bad. But anyways, that's basically what you do. 0.48 volts peak to peak. Um, you've got a square wave going on there. Not a real nice one, but that's pretty much what they show in the book is what you get. So that is now calibrated. Now as far as the leakage test goes, I don't really see any type of a calibration for that. I'm not sure why. You'd think there would be something, but... Anyways, that's pretty much how you do that. Now that I've got that taken care of, I might put this back together and start trying to test some transistors with it and see what other problems I might run into. But I just thought I'd kind of show this so it might be interesting to somebody if they happen to have one of these. Um, maybe they would have liked to have seen this. So um, that's basically why I made this video.